Duke Tobin met with the media with the NFL draft just six days away. Hi again, everybody. I'm James Rapine of AllBengals.com and Cincinnati Bengals Talk here at Paul Brown Stadium where the weather, well, you can't beat it. I'm not going to lie to you, ladies and gentlemen. It is great out here. Short sleeves. I should have wore shorts. I did not, mostly because, well, the weather's been crappy the past couple of weeks here in Cincinnati. But the sun is shining on Paul Brown Stadium with the NFL draft just six days away. And the Bengals director of player personnel, Duke Tobin, met with the media for 30 minutes. If you missed it, guess what? We posted it right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk, so you should check it out. And before we dive into cornerbacks, safeties, tight ends, offensive line, before we do any of that, let's get to the highlight of the news conference when Duke Tobin, well, I asked him about safeties, and he got me. Duke, how do you view the safeties in this draft class? How do I view them? The safeties, yeah, specifically at the top of the draft. Um, normally with my eyes. <laughs> I think, I think, I don't, I don't mean to be facetious. I, I... Yeah, he got me. He got me. It's fair. It's fair to say it was a, a silly way to phrase the question. I'm glad he actually answered it. And the way he answered it is there are safeties that can do pretty much anything. Free safeties that can move down to nickel. There are big, strong safeties that can play a little linebacker, which you know, when you think about Jesse Bates and Von Bell, both in the final year of their deal, Bates on the franchise tag, Von Bell is still in his prime, so they could extend him. But I think safety certainly in play in the first few rounds of the draft. Not like they're definitely going to draft one or anything like that, but is it in play at 31? Is it in play at 63? Is it in play at 95? I think so. But let's be honest here. Cornerback is such a topic. And, and so let's start there. Duke Tobin did acknowledge, one, that they're in the market for corners. Didn't run from it, didn't hide from it. And it would be silly to, considering we would all be shocked if they didn't address the cornerback position. I would say within the first three rounds of the NFL draft. But it certainly felt like, based on his answers, and again, you should go watch the entire thing right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. That's why we're here for you. We're going to give you that stuff, exclusives like that. But I, I think that that... He, you know, the fact that he acknowledged cornerback, but then when asked about offensive line, he, he didn't, not, not to that degree. I think it's pretty clear which way the Bengals are leaning in terms of need. Uh, they, they've addressed offensive line, three offensive line draft picks last year, three free agents added, all of which are going to be starters this year, at least on paper, barring something completely unforeseen. And so when you do that, I understand it. I understand why defensive back might be a higher priority. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to take one at 31. I, I think that the way the board plays out, it could really, it, not could, will impact what happens. If a corner's there like Kyer Elam, maybe an Andrew Booth Jr., you know, maybe it's a guy like Kyler Gordon out of Washington, then they'll probably take him. Got to be honest with you. At the same time, if, if a lot of those guys are gone and they have a high grade on Tyler Linderbaum or they have a high grade on Zion Johnson and Zion Johnson's still there, well, why wouldn't you take him, especially a guy like Zion Johnson who played center at the Senior Bowl, who's played both guard spots, even played a little tackle in college, <clears throat> in college, excuse me. And I don't necessarily think he is a tackle uh, in the NFL, but still has that versatility at Boston College, tested well. And so that's one thing. I think as far as priorities go, cornerback certainly higher than offensive line. That's a big takeaway from what I heard from Duke Tobin today. Uh, another thing, tight ends. Obviously, we've talked a lot about tight ends. C.J. Uzama uh, was a guy that, you know, did a lot for them, blocked, uh, was really great after the catch last year, obviously a leader in the locker room. They lose him, and, yeah, they brought in Hayden Hurst, who I think is a better receiver. I think he's more explosive, but it's a one-year deal, and it takes time for tight ends to develop, and that's something that I talked to Brian Callahan about uh, on the Locked on Bengals podcast last week. But I asked Duke about that, about the tight end position, and he said, look, it's a passing league. Obviously, you want guys that can be a threat in the passing game, and they're more valuable in this day and age. At the same time, they need to be able to block some. And I think that's a key to think about when you're looking at Trey McBride, Greg Dulcich, these top tight ends. One, are they much higher than the guys you're going to get in the middle rounds, right? Uh, if, if so then maybe you consider one of those guys at 63. Heck, maybe you consider one of those guys if you trade down from 31, which is certainly possible. I will talk about that in a second. Duke addressed that as well. But when I was thinking about it, it's like, all right, well, they want a complete tight end. Well, Trey McBride makes sense. He can block. Greg Dulcich, not as much of a blocker. 
So it would be surprising to me to see McBride lower on their board than Dulcich based on what I heard today. Does it make it true? Does it mean it's true? It's not like they showed us the draft board or anything. But when you're looking for more of a complete tight end, I think it's pretty clear that Trey McBride is that, even though Dulcich has some traits that, if they end up with, would be pretty exciting, especially catching passes from Joe Burrow on this field behind me on Sundays. Uh, Let's dive into the trade-down scenario, because I actually think this might be the most likely thing. When you talk about value in this draft, the end of the first round, most drafts, it's bad value. And it may change, and in draft night, they may look and say, oh, we have our 12th player on the board still at 31. Let's take him. But the way I look at it, and the way mock drafts outside of the organization look at it, to me... Where the Bengals are looking at corner, they're looking at you know defensive line like Logan Hall. They're looking at uh, you know maybe a safety, maybe a tight end. Picks 40 through 60, that's where you can address. That could be the sweet spot where you can address multiple. Wouldn't shock me at all. Could you imagine if they get an extra third rounder, and uh, all they do is move down from 31 to 42, let's say, and I believe that's the Colts. Let's say the Colts really like a receiver and they move up or whatever it is. And I'm not saying it would be the Colts, but you get my point is there's a chance that happens. Maybe it's the Falcons. Maybe it's one of these other teams. Maybe the Jets want to leap the Jaguars. And so when, or and leap the Lions, for that matter, because they have some of the same needs, could happen. Point being, when, when stuff like that happens, if it happens, the Bengals might get better value. But Duke Tobin talked about that, and he's like, look, we never go into a draft thinking we're going to trade back. He did confirm that they view this 31st overall pick, much like they did the T. Higgins 33rd overall selection, where it's, start of the second round and I think that's going to be important because you look at these past few drafts they do trade down in the second round they traded down in 2019 for Drew Sample they traded down last year with Jackson Carmen uh, they didn't with T Higgins and so that's kind of the blueprint to me if they view the, the top guy that's available as this can't miss player they're not moving down But if they have, and Duke Tobin described it as buckets of players, I'll say tiers because I think tiers is easier, but they have different tiers of players, and they don't view it just ranks, it's tiers. And so if all of the guys in this tier are gone and they have five guys to choose from in this tier, they may decide to move down. And so that's the interesting part, and that's the tough part to predict because they're drafting 31st. They're not drafting 21st or 10th or 5th like they did last year when they took Jamar Chase. Uh, th- this draft is going to be mighty, mighty interesting. And I-, I think it's it's fun for me because you talk with people across the league and they think that teams are all over the map with these evaluations and that the Bengals' evaluation of the- these players is going to be here and then their big board is going to look drastically different than the Ravens' big board and that their the Ravens' uh, big board is going to look drastically different than the Patriots' big board and that there's uh, there isn't a consensus. And you think about it. There isn't a consensus number one pick. There isn't a consensus number one quarterback. There isn't a consensus number one wide receiver. So that part makes a ton of sense. And it's going to be interesting to see if the Bengals end up being on the clock 31st overall and are just high-fiving because they get tremendous value there in their minds. And I think the opportunity is there. Certainly not something I, you know, I'm not hyping it up just to hype it up. I think there's a real shot that they get tremendous value at 31. And if not, I think there's a chance they move down. So, with six days to go until the NFL draft, this is what you need to do. You need to hit that subscribe button. You need to ring the bell for notifications because, well, if you haven't watched Duke Tobin yet, you need to do that. But you're going to get exclusive draft content that you're not getting anywhere else right here on Cincinnati Bengals Talk. And go to allbengals.com. We'll fill in the cracks there as well. I'm excited. It's draft time. It's been a wild, wild offseason following that Super Bowl run. But now we're less than a week away, and I can't wait. I hope you can't wait. And thank you so much for watching. As always, look at this weather. This weather is just its amazing. I could talk to you guys all day out here. All day. This is perfect. I would talk another 10 minutes, but our, 10 minutes, but our, our channel coordinator, Andrew Fox Miller, would be like, you talk for 20 minutes? No, Andrew, we got it done in less than 10. Shout out to Andrew Fox Miller for editing. I'm James Erpine signing off for now right here at Paul Brown Stadium.